Hi, we're sitting with uh, Beatrice Pacheco, who is the found, co founder of uh, Fantasporto, enjoying 40th, 40th edition. Beatrice, uh, how did the uh, idea come up? Can, do you remember the moment when you decided uh, yes, let's do a festival? Yes, we were sitting in a cafe with a friend of ours, a painter. Me and Mario want to screen some films and in, a, in an organized way and he wanted to exhibit his paintings. So we thought that because we were already publishing uh, at the time a film magazine, we thought it would be interesting to complement that activity uh, of film critic with a, um, a good festival in Portugal, which at the time was not still existing. And so how long before, how long before the, the festival started was that? Now the festival started uh, one year later more or less. Oh, it took yeah, you so a year. So in, in 1980, we yes. thought about it. In 81, in February, we were already doing the first one, uh, the first fantasy sport, which was not competitive at the time. The first one is in 81, non-competitive, but already with seven screenings per day. Wow. Then the following year, in uh, 82, it's a, a full festival with um, a competition of fantasy. And that was the trend at the time. Everybody wanted to see fantasy at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, Spielberg was uh, starting, it was the year of Blade Runner, so everybody in 82 was expecting good fantasy. And that's what we gave them. So it started like that, a good idea, uh, and it be has become a dream come true. And a good team say. too. <laughs> and a what? A good team. And a good team, yes. Yes. Because we complement each other, me and Mario. So I, yeah. I love films. I'm a cinephile since I was a child. He is a good organizer as well. So we complement. And we have reached this point for yeah. years. My God. And uh, what kind of uh, great memories come to your mind? Uh, a lot, lot of them. Mostly the friendship that we um, managed to have with a lot of important people. And I remember, for example, the day I spent with Ben Kingsley after right. he, he, had, uh, he had already received his Oscar. And he came to Porto and I had the privilege to be, to be with him the whole day and take him to listen to Fado and to eat some lobster. And then, for example, with Danny Elfman, Danny Elfman, uh, who writes the music for yeah, Tim Burton, an amazing and he composer. came here and also asked us which Portuguese music am I supposed to take home? Yes. And so he was here for the presentation of Sleepy Hollow. Um, Max von Sydow, a gentleman, who of came course. here. And uh, I remember it was the same year of the car, the, the, the car that had the name of Fantasport by Toyota. And it was very, very interesting to see this gentleman um, come to Fantasport in 98, I suppose, and thank us who were nothing compared to him uh, for inviting him. It was very, very nice. And uh, which uh, directors came let's say with the first film and became very famous after well, you remember I remember that now we can boast seven uh, Oscars for best films and I can tell you that Guillermo del Toro, the, Danny Boyle, Joel Cohen, Catherine Bigelow, all those started here with their first films in competition. Catherine so, Bigelow? Wow. Yeah, Catherine Bigelow oh, with, with Near Dark. Oh, yeah. it was fantastic. Yeah, so we, yeah. we have at this moment seven Oscar for best films that started here. James Cameron, for example, uh, yeah. started here with Piranha 2. Uh, so uh, it's very rewarding now to see the big list of names that we have discovered. And in European cinema, for example, last from Trier, uh, Pedro Almodovar, they started here in festival. And the yeah. Koreans. Yes. Also the Koreans. Yeah. The last one won an Oscar for best film. So you see that uh, looking back, we were really we have to recognize that we have an eye for, for discovering new talent, and that's very mm. good for us. Uh, I hope they all come back very famous, but yes. that doesn't happen often. <laughs> often. So this year you had uh, in Fantasport Classics, you had, uh, you had uh, Bram Stoker uh, Dracula, you had uh, Raging Bull. Uh, yeah. Did you have any of those that you have, because you do that every year, did you have any of these very big films uh, where the director came? 
No, uh, uh, in the Fantas classics, it's always very difficult. I mean, before, Most of them. early, no, early no, on the first no, presentation. No, no, no. no. Uh, we had, um, we presented Blade Runner in yeah. the European premiere, but of course, Ridley Scott didn't come. Although didn't we had already screened yeah. the Duelists, for example. Oh, a long yeah. time ago, but it yeah. didn't come to Porto. And uh, with uh, Coppola, yes, Dracula, we had a, a surprise screening, a very secret surprise screening in 1983, 93, with, um, with Bram Stoker's Dracula, which was a big event at the time. Um, but of course, Coppola didn't come. And Martin Scorsese, I had a cycle, a special program that we had uh, organized by us outside the festival. And then now, it's the, this year with Raging Bull, but unfortunately, uh, Martin Scorsese never came to the festival. I wish I had the money to, to invite them, but in full style, not to, just uh, to really welcome them. Is there anything uh, you're regretting? Oh, yes, many things. Like, I like one, like, like, I don't know, a film you, you wanted, you couldn't have, or someone you, who, who canceled at the last minute or something? I can't remember. Well, there are a few, of course, yeah. I, I'm sure, but I can't remember. Um, usually we lose films because they've been bought in the meantime. We select them and then suddenly there's a distributor and, and the process becomes so slow that we can't uh, convince the, that new distributor to, to let the film come. But that happens every year. There are always a few films that we try. I would and like to have an account. <laughs> and uh, just to finish on this one, last question: Did, uh, did the coronavirus uh, affected you? Oh. <laughs> Not infected, but affected yes. the festival. Oh yeah. yes, it did. Yeah. Uh, I was supposed to to have uh, here the director of detention, yes. uh, who is from Taiwan, and he did come and also a group of Korean uh, people from Bring Me Home, the film that we screened yeah. at the beginning of the festival. They also missed the festival because of the, the virus, which is a, a, a risk that we had to take. Of course, we had also the problems of the Gulf War, yeah. of the, uh, the, the invasion of Iraq, all those events um, of the world do affect the festival. but. Um, I, th I think that a lot of people came here and the festival had so many guests that it didn't lose the sheen, the, the brightness that it's supposed to have. So just to conclude, what is your, what made you happy with Fantasporto in 40 editions? No, what made me happy, let me speak as a woman, yeah? I would never have worked all my life in films if I hadn't uh, this festival, and of course my, my partner, uh, uh, that allowed me to have a full career in cinema, uh, which is um, wonderful, because I started this when television started in Portugal, you know, watching films, full films in prime time on television was really a big influence, and also my, my father who took me to to double screenings in the Portuguese cinema. And my mother who used to draw the faces of the actors of the 30s and 40s. So I had a big influence. And uh, it was something that I would like to pursue as a career and earn money with it, which I never did. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Working in film is a privilege. It's not a job. <laughs> well, programming Fantasport is a privilege, yes. in fact, yeah. uh, but sometimes it's a very hard <laughs> job, yeah. so I, I think that I'm, I'm, I was lucky in that sense. Good. But, but the, the festival um, is always a, a challenge. Thank you for watching filmfestivals.com, the best site for all film lovers. Thank you. Thank you, Beatrice. Thank you so much.